Hi guys, this is Paige. I want to make this video about Satan's missions against you. If you're God's child, you're in the kingdom of light or the kingdom of God, and it's like a battlefield where Jesus Christ is the general and you're the soldier, and Jesus Christ gives you missions to accomplish for his kingdom. Now, who are we fighting against? Is the kingdom of Satan or the kingdom of darkness? And within his kingdom, he's like the general. And he sends out demons on missions. The demons are like his soldiers. And he sends them out on missions against you. Now these missions are only allowed within God's will. It's when God allows them. He allows the testings. I have a whole video on if you're God's child, God will test you. It's just he, he, he allows it for his glory, also for you to be refined in his image, to make you into a better warrior, right? But those missions are there. Now, God has watched you your entire life. He knows everything about you. He's God. But there are demons who also have watched you, familiar spirits who have watched you. You know, even lost people... Satan has missions against them, too. Even when you were lost, what is his mission for them to stay lost? He doesn't want people to come to God's kingdom. There's small missions there. So they don't accept God and things like that. Just missions on their souls. But when you become God's child, then you become his enemy. And he has a lot of missions against you. And the demons were watching you your whole life. Thus, they know your weaknesses. When Jesus Christ was talking to Peter in the Bible, he said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And then Peter was saying how he would die with him. And then Jesus Christ was like, no, you're going to deny me three times. And then what happened? Peter did deny Jesus Christ three times. What did Jesus mean when he was like, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat? You're going to be tested, Peter. I'm allowing the test. You will be tested. And Satan's going to come and sift you like wheat. What does that mean? He's going to look for weaknesses within you. The sifting. Now, what was Peter's weakness? He feared death and torture. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people fear torture. And so he denied Jesus Christ because of the fear that was a weakness within him that Satan used. You see, it's the sifting. Interesting how Jesus Christ likes to use wheat. God's children are symbolically wheat or wheat, right? You know, in the parable of the wheat and the tares, the wheat and the tares would grow together, right? What are tares? They're weeds that look like wheat when they're young. What are the wheat? It's God's children who are born again, okay? God's real people. And the tares are people who say they're a Christian, but they're liars. And what happens? Jesus Christ, in time of harvest, takes the wheat, he puts them in the barn, and then he, he bundles up the tares and he throws them in fire or he burns them. It's symbolic. It's God putting his children in heaven and then taking the tares and putting them in hell. Is symbolic. There's also a part in Matthew where it says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Again, the wheat, but this time it's talking about the chaff. When people sift wheat, there's a part of the wheat that's edible, that's good, and the part that's not edible is the chaff. They sift it to remove the chaff. 
in this verse, the chaff means people that are not my children, people I put in hell. I burn them up with unquenchable fire, but I'll gather the wheat. He likes to use that, the wheat, the chaff, the wheat, the tear. And in this part, he said, you know, S Satan wants to sift you as wheat. It's like sifting. It's used in a different way because Peter is wheat himself. But it's like looking for things in you. Looking for weaknesses within you. That's what Satan does. He's watched you. The demons have watched you your whole life. They know how you operate. They don't, they're not all knowing like God, okay? But they have watched you. So, say you were a drunkard or you, you got drunk a lot before you came to God. Guess what Satan's going to be tempting you with? Because he knows that's a weakness. Or you used to get high. Or you were in sexual sin. I would say for all people, all of God's children, a weakness is sexual sin. I would think masturbation, probably for everyone. That's a hard one for everyone. This is why God has me uh, speak on this one so much. It's a very uh, high weakness within people. Because I believe everyone was doing that before they came to God, unless they're, they were very young. You know, sexual sin, and it's very displeasing to God. But, you know, if you were into drugs, that's what Satan's going to be tempting you with. Everyone has their own weakness with sexual sin, of course. So within Satan's missions, when he tests you or tempts you, when God allows the temptation, he'll come and try to make you sin. A sin unto death. And it'll be a weakness. It's within the sifting. You sift. and But within it, God is so high. What he does is when you don't do it, he, he refines you. Even if you did fall, he would refine you. I don't know if you guys have ever fallen to sin. But in my second thorn, I fell to some bad sins. And the guilt was so bad and the shame was so bad that I'm like, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> he makes it painful for you if you're born again. The experience of even doing that and displeasing God was so bad that I'm like, I'm not doing that again. And God knew why I did it. I mean, I was, it's not okay that I did it, but it's when I was very sick too. But you know, we can fall to sin in general. Um, and then we are to repent and not live in it. But Satan's going to try to trap you in some type of sin unto death. Because if he can trap you in, in a sin unto death, you're in trouble. You're not going to be able to hear from God. You're going to be confused. And you're in danger of hellfire if you live in it. Now, Christians can fall, but God knows the heart. He knows if you're falling and then you're you're very sorry and you're living in repentance or if you're living in it and you're using his grace and just thinks it's cool. He knows the heart, you know, you don't want to play around with that, but Satan will try to get you into sin big time. You know, when God tests me or allows the tests on me, there are times where the, the temptation to sin is so bad. It is like, and it'll go on for like a half an hour. I'll be like, oh my, it's really hard, but it glorifies God. He, d he allows it because it glorifies him. The temptation will be very, very strong. What do I do in those moments? I just say, I'm never going to do it. And I also think of the time when I did fall to certain sins and how I felt after and it was so painful and horrible that I was like, no, I'm not doing that again. I'm not going to experience that. See, because when you fall, God does forgive you. But you're going to feel really shameful, bad. It doesn't glorify him. He'll use it to refine you, though. Look at Peter. Peter fell real bad. Denied Jesus Christ. It refined him. 
because later he died for Jesus. I'm sure he was more probably accepting of that. He was like, okay, I let Jesus down. I'm not letting him down again. I'll die for him. You know, but you see, God knew his heart. So that's the number one way I believe Satan's going to come after you, right? The temptation to sin willfully, sin unto death. What are other ways? Well, basically, he's going to try to destroy your faith. Faith in God. It says that without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Everything you do for God is all based in faith. What is that belief in Jesus Christ? Everything. What do you use against Satan's attacks? The shield of faith. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. It's like Satan's little armies who sends out darts at you. And how do you defend yourself? Your faith, your shield of faith. You know, God had given me a dream once, and in the dream there was this man there, and he's like, do you know that there's armies of doubt against you? That was from God, that dream. There's missions against me, armies, trying to get me to give up on God, to destroy my faith, to bring me into sin, same for you. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Now, God does show you he's real. It's not like you have to walk on like nothing. There's like nothing. <laughs> he does speak to you and he is real. But Satan's going to probably come to you and tell you he's not real. It's one of his attacks. He'll be like, God's not real. Satan's not real. This is not real. This is crazy. This is not really happening. You should give up. You should sin. He'll also use it when you're being tempted to sin. He'll be like, you can just say you're sorry to God. It's cool. Just give in and do it. Now, it's true. You can repent if you fall. <clears throat> but why is Satan doing that? He wants to, to trap you in the sin. Because if you go and sin unto death, it's, it's going to feed it. And so the next time it's going to be harder. And he knows that. So he wants to get you into a cycle. But if he can get you into sin. He's very sneaky. Been doing this a long time. You know, Satan, he's pretty intelligent in certain ways. Okay? Not that I'm giving him any credit. But he, he's very smart in how he deceives people. Okay? You should not be ignorant of him and don't underestimate him okay because he's sneaky says so even paul was saying you know lest satan should get an advantage of us for we are not ignorant of his devices some people will be like you know we shouldn't talk about satan and why he's our enemy see the demons study us they study us to, to see our weaknesses because we're, we're his, their enemy. Children of God. He looks for the weaknesses. He's learning us. We're his enemy. So God wants us to learn Satan and his weaknesses, how he operates to learn our enemy so that we can prosper and do the missions God has for us. He comes against you daily if you're God's child. I'm going to try to destroy your faith. So your weapons, like I said in that other video, the blood of Christ, because he's going to come and condemn you constantly. He's like a little Pharisee. You know, I remember when I first came to God, he was trying to tell me that eating chocolate chips was a sin. I was like, what? Is this a sin? <laughs> it's Satan. He's a little Pharisee. <laughs> and, you know, he'll condemn you over things just like the 
Pharisees did. Just like tiny little things that don't even matter to God. You know. And um, you use the blood of Christ. But also you must not do sin unto death. I'll try to get you into sin unto death. He's so sneaky, really. He'll tell you things are sin when they're not to confuse you. Then, then he'll make you think it's okay to willfully sin unto death. Very sneaky. Then he'll try to destroy your faith. He'll try to destroy your relationship with God. There's a lot of times where he'll be like, don't talk to God anymore. Because God's not real. You better not talk to him. And I'm like, you're a liar, Satan. I'm going to keep talking to God. And I feel God's joy when I do that. And I keep talking to him to try to destroy your relationship with God. No, if you're God's child, Satan has missions against you daily to stop you, especially if you have a high calling too. He's going to try to stop you in your calling, lie to you, tell you you're not saved. That's a big one. I remember when I was young in God, he would be telling me I wasn't saved all the time. It scared me. I was like, what is, what is this? It's Satan. He's a liar. Recognize how he works. Know he knows your weaknesses. Know what your weaknesses are. So you can defend yourself and not give in to him. And know that when you're being tempted to sin and it's really bad and you don't do it, it glorifies God. This is why you're created. To glorify him. Complete your missions for God. This is why you're made. No, Satan's going to have missions against you. He's our enemy. And he doesn't stop. He will never stop. This is what he... This is his thing in life. This is all he has. So be aware of his devices. Alright, love you guys. Bye.